For number 11, we're dealing with three different things. <clears throat> we're dealing with offensive players, defensive players, and a goaltender. Okay, so let's just read it and, and kind of piece it together as we go. Starting line for a hockey team should consist of three offensive players, two defensive players, and one goaltender. Coach has 11 defensive players, six defensive players, two goaltenders from which to choose the starting line. Whoa, a lot of information. What we're going to need to do, don't get crazy with it. Just, just stop right there and let's figure out one thing at a time. We know we're dealing with defensive people. <laughs> that was a pun. We also know we're dealing with defensive people. And we also have a goaltender. Goaltender. I could write neatly, that'd be great. Okay. We're going to have three offensive players when we have 11 to choose from. Does the order matter? No. We have a big group made smaller. Now we're going to have to do this again for defensive and for goaltenders, but we have a big group made smaller and the order doesn't matter. So all of these are going to be combinations. Every one of these is going to be a combination. So we have 11 offensive players and we want to pick three of them. Well, let's go to defensive. How many do we have to start with? Boy, I hope you said six. How many do we need? Two, and the order doesn't matter. We have two goaltenders, and we want one of them. Knowing that we only want one of them, we'll just put a one right there. And we're gonna figure those things out. I'm gonna actually go ahead and do this all at one time, though. Let's do this entire thing at one time. How many unique starting lines can the coach create? So knowing that I could create this many, I don't even know what that number is. The calculator will tell me in a minute. But knowing I could do this, knowing I can do this, and I can do this, I have to decide what to do with these three answers. Whatever these three numbers are, I don't know what to do with them yet. Let's think about it. Now, let's, let's go back for just a second. We have two options. It could be an and or it could be an or. I could arrange them a certain way here, or I could arrange them a certain way here, or I could do this. Let's think about it a different way. I could do this, and this, and this. So the question is, are we going to have an and in there, or are we going to have an or? Okay, let's keep that in mind as we keep going. Let's figure these three things out. If you didn't catch the and and the or part, it's going to make sense in just a minute. Okay, there's 165 of those. Fifteen of those. Now, I would like to think you could do this one in your head. How many groups of one can I have from two people? Mm, that would be two groups. Okay, so question. I could arrange these 165 ways. And then these 160, 150, then these 15 ways. Wow, I stuttered through that one. And then arrange these two different ways. And because it said and in between, I don't know if you caught that. This, and then I'll have this many, and then I have this. This goes back to a different type of problem we did where we multiplied the number of options that we have. Remember, I'm going to digress for just a second. We had a problem or two where you were getting ice cream or something and you had like three flavors and you had like, that looked like an O, I mean, it should be an O. And then you had like two um, toppings and then you're like, how many different things can you get? Well, you have three here and you have two here and it's that. You multiply your options.
I have 165 options here, 15 options here, and two options here. And when I multiply them, I get 4,950. So it was an and problem. I'll do this, and I'll do this, and I'll do this, and there it goes.